What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy John back with another PewTube video. What's good with y'all, man? I just wanted to get up here real quick and talk about something um, that I'm kind of excited about. Uh, so, if, 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 if any of y'all have actually seen my, my AR-15 video, um, then I talk about like this the first gun that I bought and how it didn't work and I wasn't I didn't know enough about AR-15s to like properly diagnose the issue and figure out what was going on. Um, but I actually have now. I figured it out. And uh, I was actually able to get my old gun to work. So here we go. This is my DPMS Oracle. Don't laugh. But this is a super budget gun and we're going to talk about it. So, matter of fact, let's just jump right in. As you can tell, my gun is clear and safe. There's no magazine in there. No round in the chamber. Uh, what we got here is a DPMS Oracle. And the things that I changed on this are, this is a, a Blackhawk um, quad rail that I got from like Cabela's or something. Uh, this is a TLR3, Streamlight TLR3. It's basically a pistol light. I got a True Glow, really cheap. Um, red dot comes with like a, a red dot, a green dot, and a blue dot. Really cheap. Only three uh, like brightness settings, but you know it's always worked for me. Uh, Magpul K2 grip. This is this is my my lower that y'all seen in the other video. So nothing on this has changed. This Magpul K2 grip. Uh, you know the Magpul free float sling attachment point back here. Magpul stock. And yeah, this is the setup that I've had on this rifle since since I got it, which was about five or six years ago. Well, let me go over the the reason why um, this never worked, and probably the reason why I'm actually making this video. Yesterday I was shooting a video that I'm gonna I'm gonna edit. I'm gonna put it out soon, but a video about how to properly take down, clean, and lubricate, or how I do. Um, clean and lubricate and take down your bolt carrier group. For people that are new to AR-15s, a lot of folks don't even know how the bolt carrier group works or how the actual weapon platform works. Uh, and I was one of those people and that was the reason why once I realized that the DPMS wouldn't run and I couldn't get the rounds to cycle and I asked a couple people and nobody could really tell me what was going on because it was basically a brand new rifle, uh, I just kind of gave up on it and then just copped the PSA. And then I just ran the PSA. I just threw the DPMS lower on the PSA upper and kitted it out, you know, oop, kitted it out the way that I wanted to, you know. Um, and I'm gonna talk about this in another video. Uh, I kind of just forgot about this uh, this other lower, but yesterday when I did that video, I was like, let me go grab that rifle and take down that bolt because back in the day I didn't know how to take down a bolt. I didn't understand how the bolt carry group worked and how these things interface with one another. I didn't I didn't understand that. So I was like, let me do that. And I as soon as I took out the bolt, uh, the bolt carry group, not even I didn't even get to the bolt yet. As soon as I took out the actual bolt carry group, I saw what the issue is. And I'm gonna show y'all. So This, this is a bolt carry group, AR-15 bolt carry group. This right here, that's your gas key. These screws right here, they hold in this gas key. So what this thing does, right, the way that your, that your weapon operates is that the gas tube shoots gas into this and that pushes this back. Um, I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't understand exactly how the weapon worked. I didn't understand that at that point. The thing that was wrong with this was that if you see here where I showed you those screws, if you could tell, I'm not sure if you could tell because it won't focus, but there's like dimpling here, right? A little bit of dimpling here. That's that's a stake job. You're supposed to stake these, these screws or these pins so that they'll never come out. Uh, apparently, these weren't staked well enough and this front pin, this top pin, was basic it was just really loose and the whole gas key was loose and that was the reason why I couldn't get the weapon to properly cycle. Um so once I noticed that 
I just tightened it down with a hex wrench as much as I could. I just cinched it down like as tight as I could get it. And I took it out and I, I ran like three or four mags through it flawlessly and that's actually never ever happened. So now that I know what the issue is, I'll probably either try to find somebody who can properly stake this for me or just buy another bolt carrier. Um, Cause I have a bolt, I have a fire pin. I don't really have an issue with those things, uh, you know. Cam pin, everything, everything else seems to be like decent, but I'm a little nervous about that. But as of now, it works. As long as I, you know, check on it um, after every time that I like go to the range, I think that this is a viable option. Like, if I was gonna have to use it for a home defense, or the only way I would feel comfortable using it for home defense is if um, I knew that it was like clean, lubricated, and that I checked the bolts. And I think that if you're gonna own a weapon like this, because like I said, this is extremely budget. Like this is affordable. I just checked before I started this video to see. Um, and if you can find one in stock, you can get a, a complete rifle for five hundred dollars. You know, that's that's minus the optic. But like I said, these things were cheap. I bought this. I think I paid thirty five dollars for this optic. You know, this foregrip was cheap, fifteen twenty dollars. Um, this Black Hawk, uh, Black Hawk. What is this shit? Quad rail, cheap. I think it was fifty bucks. So like you can set up a rifle for less than a thousand dollars and as long as you keep your bolt clean and lubricated and you keep the, the weapon in working order and you don't neglect this weapon, I'm pretty sure that this could be a viable option for self-defense. Uh, I'm not going to probably use it for that, but what I'm planning on using it for is this is going to be like the weapon I take when people hit me up and they're like, yo, I'm, I'm looking to like get into purchasing an AR-15 or purchasing a gun and I, I just wanted to know if you could you know show me a couple things so I get those those messages a lot a lot of people like in my circle um, or in my, my my community or whatever hit me up I guess I'm like the kind of the resident gun guy in my circle so this is the gun I'm gonna I'm gonna teach people on people like I said I'm not a I'm not a licensed firearms instructor but I will show people the basics if I can. So if I if I take you to the range and, and show you the basics of shooting, this will probably be what we'll learn on. Because I think that the way that it's set up is just really intuitive for folks. It's a lot lighter weight than my PSA because there's less rail section. So it's a lot lighter weight. Um, it's the way that I have my PSA set up um, is for my hand to ride as as forward as it can, right? And if this is your first time shooting the AR. That might not be the most comfortable thing. So I think, like I said, this setup is a lot more intuitive. It has a grip um, right here that, you know, I, I use it like this so I can actually use that light. But if I'm taking somebody shooting and they want to, you know, broom handle, I'm, I'm not going to tell them not to do that. I'm going to make sure, I'm going to tell them and explain why that might not be the most stable position. But I think that this is very comfortable for people, especially their first time shooting a rifle, especially women. So... Like I said, I took my little sister. Um, I took my little sister out yesterday because she was in town and we shot this and she was able to shoot it. She ain't getting no hits, but <laughs> she was able to shoot it. Um, the red dot I've never had an issue with it, even though it's very cheap. It's not something that I would, you know, de you know, put my life on. But for just taking it outside, you know, shooting. If this is a weapon that you're not planning on, like trying to do a bunch of classes with and putting a bunch of rounds through it, I think it's cool. Uh, it's just like a standard barrel. It's not like you know chrome lined or anything like that. This this gas, their their gas. What is this? Um, this gas block, aluminum gas block. It gets really hot, like super hot. So this is not like the type of weapon that you're gonna go and you know, do a bunch of mag dumps. But 
if you're not planning on doing a whole bunch of shooting, like this is this is this is like that plinking gun, like or like a coyote gun, or you know, if you're you know into that kind of shit, this is like the family reunion gun, like you know, you oh your family wants you to bring something cool to shoot, you know, you just you just throw this in the trunk, you know, so, or it's like something that you keep lubricated and you just keep it in the closet just in case. Like as long as it's clean and it's in working order, it should it should run. And you shouldn't have many issues with it. But as soon, like I said, this is this is a budget gun. This is super budget. So if you're, if it gets, you get some sand in there, some dirt. If you're trying to run a bunch of steel, you're probably gonna encounter some issues. But if you're just running like decent ammo, decent brass case ammo, self defense loads, things of that nature, it is um, it's it's a five five six barrel. Uh, and it's a one and nine twist. So you know that you know some rounds are not gonna. Some rounds are going to be better than others uh, through this barrel, but for general purposes of like getting into an AR, um, trying to have something that you can you you can really like learn about this platform. I think that this is cool. I think this is cool. Kind of like along the lines of my PSA. The only difference is um, I trust my PSA and the way that I have it set up. I trust I trust that I can defend my life with that PSA. I don't think I would trust that, especially since the first five years that I owned this rifle, I couldn't really get it to shoot more than five rounds without having issues cycling. But I took it out yesterday, I ran four mags through it, and it ran flawlessly. And it's super accurate. I can't even front. I don't know if they designed these cheap optics to go with these cheap guns, but it is it, it like inside of 20 yards, which is you know self-defense uh, distances. Point of aim, point of impact. Like I don't have any issues. I haven't. I've never shot this past 50 yards. So, and I probably I don't. I didn't buy this for that, you know. So like I said, for what I'm gonna be using it for, like showing people, you know, how to how to shoot and like how to actually use a rifle or AR-15 and like somebody's introduction to this platform. I think that this works perfectly. You know, if you can get your hands on on one of these for four or five hundred dollars, get it. Like I I don't. I wouldn't say not to get it, you know. I've, I would say get it, get it. There's nothing wrong with this rifle unless you're looking for a rifle to like take classes with, get dirty, you know. You want something to run, you know. Get you, get you a, get you either, you know, get you a BCM or something like that, or even a Colt, you know. You'll do, you'll do well with a Colt. But like I said, if you're just trying to do some plinking, trying to have some fun, you might be doing, you know, varmint hunting, coyote, whatever. You know, like I said, taking it to your family reunion gun, something to throw in the back of the truck just to go have some fun with your friends, and you're not trying to burn 5,000, you know, rounds through this, and you're not trying to do mag dumps, I think that this is cool. I think it's a, it's a good weapon to have if you're just trying to have something in the closet just in case. I think I think that is cool. And this setup, you know, like I said, the budget, it's a budget setup. It's not a duty setup or a war, you know, battle gun or anything like that. But for a home defense gun, somebody who's not really an avid shooter and somebody who just wants to have an AR-15 rifle for, for a home defense situation or any of those other things that I mentioned, you'll be hard pressed to find something better than this for this price point. Um, if you guys disagree, let me know. You know, let me know in the comment section. But like I said, I think it ran nice. I'm gonna do some more testing on it. And I'll let y'all know, but yeah, yeah. So if you like that that content, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe because I'm gonna keep trying to make good content for y'all. Keep trying to make good videos. Post a lot more. I know it's kind of difficult to post a lot, especially in these times because I'm not. I haven't really been inspired. Um, but I am inspired to, to continue to try to normalize uh, firearm ownership and education in the black community, which is the main reason why I made this page. So, like, comment, subscribe, you know, help me out. Love y'all. Peace. Oh, I, damn. I should not do that.